Uh, so the three guys are looking for a place to hold up and wait. You just do it. I'll crush you with through. Anyway. I finally found the right key and put it in the keyhole. I didn't turn the knob though. I pulled out my gun. Now I turn the knob and yank the door open. The thumping was one of them. It's crippled and is on its stomach. It looked up at me and moaned with a vacant look in its eyes. I shot it. It slumped to the floor. I grabbed the thing by the shoulder and dragged it out of the doorway. I stepped into the room and closed the door behind me. The lockers were against the back wall, and on my left and right were the gun racks. In the middle of the room was a table. It had some papers on it. Yesterday's paper. A couple of gun magazines and a diary. I glanced at it. The diary is normal up until about a week ago. October 24th, 1998, 9.21 a.m. Most everyone has been turned into a flesh-eating monster. October 25th, 1998, 4.17 p.m. I have been trying to save a few tenants trapped in their apartments, but when I finally got into one of the last apartments, a zombie came out from a hole and caught me by surprise. I sent it back to the grave, but I'd be following soon. Under normal circumstances, this bite would only have meant a few stitches and a bad scar, but somehow a monster's bite is always fatal. It must be something in their saliva. The next entry is hard to read. October 26th, 9 p.m. It's getting hard to think. I hope the tenants got away. I might have done myself in, but... The line streaked off the paper. He must have become one of them right then. My eyes darted around the room for what I came for. I found two canvas camouflage bags and loaded them full of guns and ammo. One bag was full of ammo, the other was with the smaller guns. I also took a hunting rifle and two shotguns. I strapped the rifle to my back and one of the shotguns. I'd be making use of the other very soon. The gun room had a hall that led into an apartment. Before I left, I went into the kitchen and got a drink of water. It hit me just then that we really might not get out of this alive, that a grizzly end is always just a step away now. I snapped out of it and remembered that Horace and Ken were waiting for me. With a bag under each arm, a rifle, and a shotgun across my back, and a fully loaded shotgun in my hands, I was ready to leave. The zombie was still dead. I climbed the stairs, slowly listening for any new noises. I heard nothing until I got in front of the lobby's door. I froze in front of it. There was a thumping coming from behind it now. I quietly turned the knob to where the door would open if I pushed it, and then I kicked it open instead. The door hit a body that still opened all the way. Nearly all of the bodies had now changed. Five of them. The shotgun. I had only seven shots. I blasted the one in front of me and then the one above my left. I primed the shotgun and dashed forward. One blast and another went down. The way out was open and I made a run for it. Outside I was safe and the ambulance was still there. I tapped on the back of the ambulance, but there was no answer. Horace, open up! You made it! Yes, it was there, all of it. Ken was lying on a stretcher next to Horace. That's a relief. Ow! You hanging in there? Yeah, how about you? Nobody tried to take a bite out of you? A few of them were inside, but I took care of them. I've been on duty for almost two days straight. I've seen men bitten and die in just a few hours. Does that mean that your wounds are... Not from those things. This one on my arm is from a man who was panicking and waving a gun around. He actually shot me. The one on my torso is from an explosion in one of the apartments in the building where you found those guns. We need to get moving. The highways are blocked. What? The military closed off the highway and forced all the cars back into the city. They aren't coming to help us, Ken. They're waiting for us to die here. I don't believe it. I climbed into the front of the ambulance. I don't know where to go, but we can't just stay here. 